Hey, what's up and welcome back to another Lair by Lair. In today's tutorial, we're gonna take a look at making wires. Uh, so in my latest project, I figured that I would add, right after the screws, I figured I'd add some wires to the project. And you know, this could be one of those things like, yeah, you don't really need to do that. But in my case, I thought it'd be kind of an interesting uh, thing to do. And I kind of think this would work really well. So one benefit of doing this is now I can figure out how long my wires need to be for a certain component. So for this switch, for example, it's being wired into this Adafruit power boost. I click on that, it tells me the wire length. It is 46 millimeters. Let's take a look at these buttons over here. Click on this line. This needs to be about 81 millimeters. So that's a good way to kind of get a reference point for how long these wires need to be. Another one, of course, is of course, just looking to see if there's any collisions. Do the wires fit? Can they can they fit? Is there enough space and stuff like that? So maybe it makes sense. Uh, I think I think this is cool. It just looks cool. <laughs> there's one thing, but there is kind of some use case to it. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is show you guys how I put it together. So this is kind of a new project I'm working on and I need to kind of showcase uh, how the wire is going to connect into this Adafruit power boost. I got a JST connector over here, pretty basic shapes, um, but uh, we'll do this by projecting some sketches. Uh, before we do that, let's make a new component and call this wires tutorial because I kind of already set one up. So wires, and then we want to project uh, these surfaces. So this is where we're going to connect. I have the wires coming out of here and they're going to come into the back over here. So I need to pick one of these guys first. Uh, so I'm going to pick this one. So I'm going to hit P on my keyboard to project that into its own sketch. If we bring back our thing here, you can open it. There it is. Hit OK. Now you create a profile for the wire. So depending on how thick your wire is going to be, you'll want to change that. Mine's going to be about 1.5 millimeters. So I got that. Now I need to make the next sketch. Uh, so I'm going to do it over here. Select that area. Project that into its own sketch with the hotkey P. And then if I look at it straight on, I can create a circle profile. Um, by figuring out where the, the, um, the middle points are, like this. And then I can get this snap here in the center of this rectangle. We give it the same um, diameter. So with this sketch now, I need to kind of project in uh, this guy over here, but it is, it's on a different plane. So we need to use the uh, include 3D geometry feature. So this is basically like the project feature, but it lets you project 3D geometry. Then click on that. And then I click on our little profile there. And then if I hide sketch one, you can see it is now there and it's purple. Let's just know it's projected. Next thing I need to do is create our wire. The way I created mine are with splines because they're nice and curvy. So I'm gonna click on that. I wanna start the spline off connected, you know, with a coincident constraint. So I'll click on that circle there. And I recommend doing at least three points. If you have any more than that, it's gonna get pretty complicated. Um, kind of tedious, not complicated. So I click on the, somewhere over there, and then I'll uh, the last um, thing will be a coincidence over here. And then I need to hit the checkbox, of course, to uh, confirm that. And unfortunately, it closed it. I didn't want that, so I'm gonna um, kind of hit the escape key and then click on that, right click, and then say open close spline curve. Normally, you don't need to do that. But for whatever reason, it happened this time. So now you can see um, it looks 2D, but if I look at it from the top view, I can see there's a little bit of movement to it. You can see it comes from here and goes over there. Um, obviously this, this is kind of intersecting here. So I need to do a lot of finessing uh, to get this to look right. So I, um, you can select these little green handles uh, to, to you know, manipulate the curves. If you ever use the spline, you know, you know this can take a little bit here, so. Um, I want to kind of have it come out here maybe, that looks okay. And then I'll look at it from this angle. And this is really where you want to kind of uh, look at the wire from every possible angle. Because um, you do have to kind of make sure that it makes sense. Um, so you got to kind of keep moving um, around. And I'm using the move command M to, to quickly uh, move stuff, so that's that's how I'm doing that. Um, and you know, you can manipulate it all you want, spend all day on it, but ultimately it's up to you how long you want to spend time on that. So with that, I think that looks good. We can manipulate it later, which is really cool. So let's go ahead and do the, the loft. Uh, just bring up the toolbox, hit loft. I want to select this profile first. 
and then I need to change the guide type to center line. I'll go ahead and select our, our spline, zoom out, and then let's hit the plus button over here under profiles and select our second circle profile. And there we go. Hit OK. And you want to make it a new body or a new component. It's up to you. I'm going to hit OK on that. Now I got that. That looks really cool. Now the cool thing is um, if, you know, we we're still working on this design and we got to move things around. If I need to move stuff, it's fairly easy. Um, let's bring up the sketch. And we don't even have to, we don't even have to edit it. We just click on one of these dots, hit the M key, and now you can move it where you want. So I'm going to bring it out a little bit. Uh, you can bring it up, do whatever you want with it. You can see it's kind of updating with it. Um, if not, then you just have to hit the OK button and it'll update. So that's pretty cool. Another cool thing is you can, if your component moves, uh, you can, it'll actually move with it in certain situations. So here, here's how kind of you need to do it. So if I go up to my main component, my main um, assembly here, if I look at my timeline, you see I have a captured position. And this captured position was created before I did any of these sketches. So that means that if I go into this captured position and edit it, uh, my stuff will update with it. So let's say, you know, I want to move the, the power, the, the Adafruit Feather. Let's say I want to move that up a little bit, let's say like by 10 millimeters. Hit OK. And, and when I finish capture position, Fusion smart enough to go, hey, um, that's a projected sketch. And I am locked to that surface from that body. So I'm just going to go ahead and update. So that's really cool. Um, so if you're still working with your design and you, you tend to move things around, definitely try to uh, keep your captured position down to just one position. And, and that way you can modify it. And then things that are you know using it as a reference point can update uh, forward in the timeline. Uh, so to create the two wires, um, I did a little bit of um, trickery. So it's not actually two lofts, it's just one loft. And the way I did that is I just smashed two circle profiles together. So if I go to sketch three, modify, you can see how I did that. I just, uh, you know, kind of smash intersected two circles with each other. And then I use the trim tool, which is the letter T on your keyboard. Then you can trim away any um, intersecting points. That way I can just have one profile here. It kind of looks like a double barrel. Uh, so that's how I was able to create those two, those two wires. And you notice my colors got kind of got removed. So the way I did the colors, Hit the A key so you can bring up your appearance panel and just change the, the apply to to faces. That way you can, you know, apply different colors to each individual face because this is just one solid. It's not two solids. So that's how whoop, this one. That's how you can do it. Very easy. Uh, so that's kind of neat. Uh, obviously, I got some problems here with this. Let's actually try to see if we can fix that. So I update that. I want to move this switch up. Uh, this one, move it up. Yeah, that updates. Sweet. So that's really cool. All right. So let me know what you guys think. Um, if you have any cool tips on using the 3D, uh, include 3D geometry, maybe there's a way to do this with just one sketch. That would be really cool. Let me know. Uh, um, I really appreciate you guys' comments. And if you're new to here, definitely check out the comments. You'll see some uh, some very useful tips and stuff from, from awesome Fusion 360 community people. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll talk to you in the next one.